does it switch back to me being able to see you <laughs> yes 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 of course of course okay <laughs> hey we're live excellent fabulous so hello 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 Hi. hello good morning. morning morning um this is our friday slides chat episode uh, it's me, Lisa, again. So, you know, one more of Let's Chat to go. So that'll be the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're getting to the end of this now, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've um, got Elric again, who's my techie guru, and keeps keeps making sure that I'm on connection here. <laughs> and jumps in with any questions that you may wish to ask, you know, during the interview. Um, today we have Jade from the Five College Student Association. She's along today to, and she'll be talking about how the college, the Student Association have been working with the students during lockdown and how, how they became to get them back into the college this after the summer. So hi Jade, so do you want to tell us a little bit about everything that's been going on? Sure, yeah. So, um, hello, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, it's been a strange sort of six months, uh, as it has been for everybody. Um, I suppose I'll kind of do it in two parts. So, um, like through at the beginning of it, obviously, when everyone kind of had to go home, we had to really look at the getting lessons and stuff put online. Um, so, the, the college did a lot. The college and the SA had previously been talking about sort of loaning laptops and stuff. So, we managed to deliver. Um, over 500 um, either devices or dongles for students to make sure that they, if they didn't have the internet, they could access it. And if they didn't have equipment, could have access to that as well. Um, things like the library and stuff, obviously we just allowed the um, book loans and stuff to last longer. The college departments donated the PPE that we had. Um, you've maybe seen some of the sort of news articles, it's all up on the Fife College website. Um, and then we were making visors and stuff as well. So that was all going out to NHS and local health and social care workers, um, along with many other things. So we did a big push on sort of mental health because everybody was understandably panicked. And um, some of our staff members who are involved in community groups as well helped out with like food banks and distribution of sort of essentials. Um, on top of different things. So there's lots of stuff that's been going on through lockdown that people have been getting involved in. Um, for us at the Students Association, a lot of our presence is online already. So we've got, we're on pretty much every social media account that you can have. <laughs> um, but we very quickly set up the sort of FCSA digital office on Microsoft Teams um, and moved all of our class reps and stuff into there. We did weekly, I don't know if you joined in any actually, Lisa, we did sort of weekly quizzes um, on yes, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Yeah. So frantically. I won, won. <laughs> did you? Yeah. <laughs> frantically during the week, you know, trying to make just a little bit of fun and stuff as well. So like we're obviously on the, I, I, I'm going to use frontline wrong, but you know, students come to us when they've got questions because they don't kind of know what's happening. So on top of all of that, we wanted to just inject some sort of fun in there. We wanted to make sure that students were still engaging with us. Um, Kirsten, who's our sports events and societies coordinator and I set up um, sort of six weeks of mindful yoga. Um, so just on Zoom, Very neither of us are yoga instructors, but we both kind of do it a little bit um, at home or at the gym or whatever. Um, so we would just sort of run a 40 minute Zoom class. We would do half an hour focused on sort of breathing and stretching more than anything and then just had a lot of 10-15 minutes at the end where students could just ask any questions you know have a chat if they were we had to we were trying to find creative ways to tackle isolation to tackle the sort of fear and anxiety to still make it fun to still have people engage in um, and to know that we were still here to kind of help so yeah we did there, there was lots of other things I'm sure you've seen on social media that we were up to but yeah we were kind of focusing on that aspect um, and just making sure that they had the support there really to finish their course and knew what was going on. Um, yeah. now, and now we're back on campus. Yeah. How, how, is, how do you feel the students are coming back at the moment? You know, because um, I've seen, like you putting up stuff like how you are dealing with the timetable and having to wear masks for certain things, you know, and yeah. everything. So... 
obviously, I mean, as you know yourself um, and anyone does, the guidance is constantly changing. So we're they're constantly updating that. The Fife College um, sort of communication team have created this new section of the web page now and it's they've called it kind of hashtag in the loop so all of the faqs all of the information about coming back to college what does your timetable mean when should you be on campus and when are you studying all of these things are up on there um, and are changing i think the students there's kind of mixed some can't wait it's like everybody some can't wait to get back to work some can't wait to get back in the classroom and others are understandably still a little bit anxious and um, there's a few kind of now that we're the face coverings are kind of mandatory in and around the moving spaces so corridors refectories libraries um there's a few people that are like I, i'm exempt from it and I, I can't wear it so we've um i don't know if you've heard of the sunflower lanyard campaign. yeah so that's that's run across all campuses so you can go and pick up your wristband or your sunflower lanyard from either us or reception or inclusion and um, and that means that you won't then be kind of stopped and go you know where's your mask sort of you won't Kind of be asked that because you've got your your exemption and um, so that's there for people who really need to use it and um, otherwise once you're in the classroom everything's been like the the college team the estates guys and everything have worked so hard so everything's two meters apart there's one-way systems and um, there's hand sanitizer absolutely everywhere like you can't walk down the main corridor without hitting like four hand sanitizers um, and everything's kind of changed that way We've made sort of, um, again, the market have been great. They've made sort of maps that are going out on Monday that will tell you kind of you're here. If you need to get to this classroom, here's how you follow the one way. So like, we've, we're trying to think of everything to just make coming back to college as smooth as possible. Um, and it's staggered as well. So we're not going to have everybody in at the one time. Yeah. Timetable and um, have negotiated and renegotiated where the timetables are to see that, you know, this week you're going to do theory, so you'll do it from home, but this day you'll be in. Try to condense instead of students. I don't know when you were at college, how many, like I was in sort of three, and it was sort of three, maybe three and a half days a week. We've tried to condense that down. Um, yeah. And yeah. I mean, constant, constant cleaning. The, the cleaning team have been pretty much tripled just to keep up with everything to make sure that everything's all up and done. So we're trying to make it as smooth as possible so that people are feel as comfortable as possible returning back. But it's a whole new world we're living in. It is. So see how you're saying the classrooms have changed slightly. Mm -hmm. Do you mean like um, they sit like two metres apart within the classroom? Yes. See. I don't understand this, right? Because the college is doing this, mm -hmm. but at schools, like at my son's mm -hmm. school, he can sit next to his friend yeah. in the classroom. It's to do, I asked this question myself because I was like, I don't understand. Why can't we just send people back? But you, it's thinking about the age group of people who come to college. So schools, you're dealing with, you know, 10 to 16 year olds. Whereas with a college environment, um, one classroom can be made up of anyone between 15 and 16 who's brand new, fresh out of high school and somebody who's in their 50s. Like the, the age range is so diverse that we have to account for that. So the schools have a different kind of set of regulations because the, I, well, I believe anyway that the children are less susceptible to it or less susceptible to sort of more harm from it. Whereas with the adults, um, that's what the kind of government's always been saying with the adults. It's it's more transmittable and more affects you more. I think so. We've had to take on a different set of guidelines. The colleges have a different set of guidance than the schools do, and that's what we're having to adhere to, and um, to make it as safe as possible for you know the whole range of cohort of students to return back. Yeah, I understand that now better kind of thing. Yeah, because uh, I was confused about it as well. But it is it's to do with the the, the age range of people that are coming in. I believe. Um, and just trying to keep up to date with that. But the college guidance comes in all the time and we're, it's a different set of standards um, than the skills and stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. with all the uh, students, you, you get more chances of them having underlying conditions. So that, that totally yeah. makes sense. So. so underlying, yeah, underlying conditions, the general age range and coming from different sort of sources and stuff as well. So yeah, it's like they said, the kids could go out and play before the adults could. <laughs> <laughs> We're just still at home. <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> so I think a lot of people are adjusting from learning or working at a yeah. distance, and yeah, 
So, so you said you all went online using Teams or something. Is that is that? How yeah, it's Microsoft yeah. Microsoft Teams, and that yeah. was probably where we um, utilize our stuff most because you can have. So we have like the, the students' association anyway. We have our sort of team full-time work group and then we've got this sort of digital office which is for all the students staff members if they want to be are different kind of class reps on campus so you can be in the digital office but will be only be assigned into sort of half of the other little groups that are down here and it means that we can run all of the class rep staff so making sure that we stay informed with what the students are going through and all of these things i'm sure you were a class rep lisa at some point no oh um, I was actually a disability officer the year before you went in. <laughs> um, so I knew you did something. Um, yeah, so those kind of roles and stuff will all be on there on individual teams as well. And then, I mean, that's how we ran our, through the, the summer holidays, of uh, summer holidays, through the summer holidays and through the kind of initial stages of, of COVID being from home, we moved like the Dungeons and Dragons group online um, so they were using, so they, normally they meet on campus once a week, but we moved cool. them to an online platform and they used like a, a, a device, a dice on the internet so that nobody could cheat. <laughs> and that, that's how they kept playing and, and how we kept sort of clubs and societies alive is just utilising what we had here. That's, that's good to hear that you've kept that connection over the summer kind yeah. of thing with, with the students. Yeah. And we everything. Were, we post constantly. Yeah, I, I think my social media is like totally by college at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to say it. So I tried to close one of them down and Craig pulled me back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lisa's been volunteering with us before starting to work with us, but she's always checking Five College. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh my God. You'll be getting sucked into all of our freshers planning just now. We're trying to get all the signups for freshers. So uh, uh, how's freshers going to be this year? So what, what do you think is going to be so different? It, well, it's online for a start. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to, we've tried to come up with uh, creative ways to, to still make it fun. <laughs> so um, it's very, in, yeah, it's very interactive. So we have um, on the, start with the monday so monday we've got a movie night um which so now that the audience reopened we've paid for one of the cinema screenings so you can't have a full screen obviously it still has to be socially distanced but we're giving away free tickets to come to the pictures with us um and we'll we have all that planned out as to how we're going to get them the tickets and stuff so they go in and see adhere into the the distance guidelines and stuff on the Tuesday, we have a live Q&A with four um, amazing local authors. So some of them are um, have been established and are on like, you know, have loads of books out. One of them's uh, just, they actually it was our previous cycling officer. They've just released their first book. Um, and then we've got another one who's on about th book three or four. So it's Neil Broadfoot, Claire Askew, Lee Coburn and um, Lilith Cooper and Abby Melton. So we've got sort of different genres on there. So if people want to come along and ask questions and or find new material, we've got that on the Tuesday. On Thursday, we are hosting a live quiz with a celebrity host. So we have Mark Labette. Um, you might know him as the Beast from ITV's The Chase. So he's hosting yeah. our celebrity quiz. Um, but we're going, we've made that um, interactive as well. So we're going head to head with HISA Students Association. So they've come in on it with us, which means we've got sort of prizes uh, to give out for winners and stuff, but there'll also be a prize for the institution that got the highest sort of points collectively as well. So I'm going to go on a little competition with those guys. And then on Friday, um, we've got a live sort of DJ set that we're going to live stream from Vanessa Motion. So she, um, play some of the clubs and stuff in and around Fife um, and it's amazing and she hosts the breakfast show on Kingdom FM. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we, we tried to move things online but they were still interactive that people could get involved with um, and they'll feel like they were kind of part of a freshers week if you like. So, I mean I hope I think they sound great but it's pretty no, it good. Sounds, sounds <laughs> good in our hand it's in it and it's such a change from the previous years, you know, yeah. you know, because you would have like about 
10 or so many organizations in like each oh, campus more than 10 everything you know and this is just a different for that and you know and, and you've had to adapt because of what's going on yeah that's when we've got all our merchandise and we give people you know badgers and things and freebies what, what's going to happen to all that that is what freshers is for just to get the pains <laughs> You know what it is, and I'm so mad because this year, see last year, I was like, oh, people are giving away cool stuff, right? But this year, I really wanted fridge magnets. So like Cozy Kingdom give you the fridge magnet that tells you how to like store all the food in your fridge. And then they give you one that's like a temperature for your house and it tells you how to save money on your heating. Love it. Uh -huh. But I was like, I'm wondering if other people will do fridge magnets. And then I was going to collect them all for like the, the office fridges. I've still oh, yeah, got my yeah. measuring tape that he gave out last year, so <laughs> and I use it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't, don't be wrong. We still we still have stuff from last year that we could use. It's just how do we how would we give that out without kind of yeah in the sort of handing stuff over. So yeah, maybe maybe at refreshers. No worries. <laughs> it's like a meeting room and we chat, so things happen all the time. So anyway. But uh, but I was wondering, is there any ways for organizations that, like, we, we, we took part in a lot of the Freshers Week in the stalls and all that, and mm -hmm. we, we talk a bit about how we can help students and all that stuff. Is there some way that organizations who mm -hmm. might want to, to, to still be part of it somehow, to, be, to still be involved in some ways, or uh, I don't know? Yeah, so we're... Um, we're actually looking at sort of changing up the way that we do things. We did contact a bunch of businesses to see whether they wanted to, you know, offer a student discount and we could put things on. And we're now looking at sort of charities and volunteering because we've had a few emails in from people that still want to be able to to share their message. So we that is something that Kirsten and I are going to be working on in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I'm thinking of potentially trying to have maybe something a little bit more permanent. Um, but I'll definitely, once we kind of know where we're going to go in that direction, um, we'll definitely kind of pick up on that and have them maybe on a section of the website or maybe do, um, in fact, before, I think it was sort of October time last year, I was speaking to um, Pat from Five Centre for Equalities and she was looking at some of the courses and stuff that you were looking at running this year. So I'm looking at still interacting quite heavily with you. Very great. Get you into stuff and as and when we can. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And help, and I'll see what I can do to put you up there. <laughs> see, can I just ask about the PPE that you helped with the community? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, was it staff and students? You know, did they cut? Did they come in during like, you know, during the summer or the mm -hmm. or when or? the time that college would have been on, you know, to get the, these items out to people. Yeah, I think it was more the college that did this one. So I can pull up on the website just now. Can you still see me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, this was a very much college thing. So I was pulling the news articles up, but I didn't um, write the whole things down. You can see them all on the Fife College website. If you go to news, you'll be able to see lots of different things that were done. Um, so we donated the PPE that we had because obviously we use, um, some of the courses have um, PPE as standard. So what we had left over, we donated immediately. And then if I can get the news article up, maybe I can send it to you. Da, 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 da. Um, I know that there was, I think it might've been the lectures actually. Right. Um, but I can certainly, if I can't find it just now, I can send it on to you and you can maybe put it on. Hmm. Closure, donating PPEs here. College helps manufacture visors to help local health and social care. So it was the, they modified the engineering labs at Glen Rothes. Mm. Um, and I don't, I can't send that into you, can I? So they were using the 3D not, printer. Not this one, but what, if, you, if you do have a link, uh, we'll put it on the page afterwards in the comments. Okay. And there's yeah, questions we put in there. So that'd be really helpful if you could yeah. have a link. So it was the faculty director for engineering, science and built environment. So they've he's made a kind of quote on it with all of their sort of 3D printing and stuff. That was it, 3D printing. Um, so yeah, we donated what we had and then we utilized the equipment that we have that the students use 
um, to try and make some more. Not my area of expertise, but I know that we did it. But I'll send the link over. And like it will take you to the Fife College um, news section and that you'll be able to kind of read through the full stories of, um, you know, the delivery of devices and computers, because that was a massive thing for students to be able to finish their courses. Um, and then the stuff that they did for the local community and like delivering food parcels, making PPE, delivering what we had, just pretty much helping. There's been somebody in doing something um, uh -huh. the whole time. That, that's something we've had so much, like with people that were trying to uh, connect using the internet. I know, I know, I've got it. Internet that keeps dropping out myself, so I, I know the feeling. And yeah. uh, so you, you said uh, you did manage to donate some laptops or things like that for people to get yeah. online. But the, uh, in your experience, are, are students uh, able to get on the internet quite easily? So I think some people were saying that the connection is not good, or <laughs> they realize <laughs> the data is running out, or so. Have yeah. you heard anything back from that a bit? I think that, you know, there's always going to be technical difficulties. You're looking at, you know, for, so without naming names, there are some, somebody who came to me and said, you know, I live in a, in a household of six. There are two computers. There's now, you know, three full-time students, a, a, a primary school student and you know, parents and stuff working from home. That puts a strain on internet connection. And then there's other students who, who didn't, just don't, have internet in the house some you know student staff there's just there are people all over the place that don't have these things so where we could deliver we kind of did and now like the return to campus because we're still working digitally and um, for some of it there's um colleges put together a form to assess needs when you're doing going through your enrollment so if you don't have you know a computer or internet access at home before you started or, or just now even, you can fill those in um, and we're constantly getting, I think we're at capacity just now, but, but there's more coming in. Um, so they've more than, I, would, I think we gave away 500, lent out rather 500 over lockdown. I think we've tripled that currently and are getting more in to meet the, the needs of, of students. That's good to know, because I think yeah. people are quite worried about it. Service with team um, and I, mean, it was, I think it was, Carol and kind of digital services that initially kind of put this project together and um, have done amazingly, amazingly. Definitely set by example on that front. Brilliant. Yeah, I was quite amazed, you know, straight away, you know, when we all had to work, uh, work and study from home, how quickly the college was saying, right, well, if you don't have technolo any technology, yeah. tell us it can help in some way. And yeah. everything. I mean, I, I've, obviously, I've got my Surface Pro in front of me now, but that's my tap. Um, but like my mouse, <laughs> my chair, it all had to, you know, we had to kind of just borrow what we needed um, to, to adapt our yeah. living room to work from home. So students and staff basically benefited as much as we could. Yeah. Do you feel like some students have had issues or not just because they're studying because of technology, but you know, some get in the mindset that they can't focus at home when studying and they feel so much more confident with their education when they're in the live day or in the, you know, area, you know, we all have lunch kind of thing. Yeah. So um so again with like the refectories and stuff they're have they, they're two meters apart all the tables are sort of single person two meters apart and um, so the library the, they will probably feel a little bit eerie initially and um, the libraries are still there for you so if you need to you can still go in and use them capacity is obviously reduced for distancing so um i would maybe suggest like I don't know if you, I don't actually think you need to book, but you do have to wear your mask and stuff in there. So if you are in a busy household and you need to get out to go and do essential study, then you can do. The college is still open to you for library services to do that. Um, and then when it, in regards to kind of the focus and stuff, like I really struggled um, and some of the other students did, but they found it really helpful to, and, and it seems so silly, but you know how, in when you're at primary school and they give you your study timetable like a blank timetable to fill in just if you can only do half an hour and then you need a half an hour break just do it those ways 
So we were, we were sharing lots of tips over lockdown and we'll probably continue to share, you know, how to study from home, take breaks. If you wake up in the morning, obviously you have to, you have to attend your digital classes. But if this is a day where you're just doing, you know, work on your own, if you don't work well in the morning, don't pressure yourself. You do what you can when you can. So get up, go for a walk, do whatever you were going to do. And then if you study better at night time, study better at night. As long as you're in your sort of online lectures or when you're doing it and you've got everything going on there, you can email your teachers. You can still communicate with them via Teams, via email the way you normally would. But the rest of the time, when it's your time, you have to use it the way that it, you, it utilizes best for you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. a lot of words. No, but it totally makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Sharon. Everyone has to take care of themselves. It's a weird situation to be just staring at, at the screen so much. So Yeah, very much so. So, yeah, we were very much, uh, that was the kind of rhetoric that we were going with over lockdown and, and we still go with. Do what you can, when you can. Your lectures are going to be here. You're not, we're not going to ask you to sit in front of a computer for 10 hours a day. Like, it's, that's not what's going to happen. And if you need to, if your house is busy, and you, you need to come into the college for essential study, you can do. Just use the one-way systems, wear your mask, hand sanitizer everywhere, and you can sit and study in the library if that helps you. Just a quick note from online, sorry. Uh, just saying that the sound on the stream live is a bit choppy, if anyone's listening now. <laughs> uh, the sound is a bit choppy, but we will repost the video afterwards uh, with better sound and subtitling, so everyone will be able to hear correctly. So if it's a bit choppy now, don't worry about it. And uh, and we'll add the, sub the captions, which will help. And I, I can also just say we apologize for Leslie. We should have said that we're starting a bit earlier today. We shuffle things around last minute, so that's that's my fault. Just blame me. That's just me. <laughs> right? Okay. So yeah. So we will repost the video with better sound and subtitling afterwards. Anyway. So no worries if you can't hear too well right now. Sorry, Lisa, I cut you off. But yeah. <laughs> Bye -bye. Has the college like? got a plan in place you know for the future you know in case changes have to get made again you know yeah so there's the college is constantly adapting to new guidance that comes out and um, there is daily we, daily meetings weekly meetings just constant um <laughs> constant sort of reaction um, and sort of forward planning so yes there's contingency plans in place um, every time new guidance comes out, you know, everybody has to sit down in their corners and read it and come back to the table and, and we're, we can only do the best that we can do um, with it. And we're sort of following everything that's going. We're trying to stay ahead of the game um, when it comes to, you know, predicting and adapting to what's going on just to make sure that we can sort of deliver 100% um, as and when we can. We can't predict everything, obviously. But um, yeah, staying on top of it as much as we can. We've changed pretty much, like uh, so much of college life has, has been adapted and, and um, restructured, if you like, to, to make sure that it's safe and that we can try and deliver everything really and effectively. Does that make sense? So like yeah. we've everything, we're constantly reacting to it. There's people working on it constantly. What, one thing we obviously have a center for equalities we're really interested in is obviously uh, not all the students can easily adapt to it. Is there uh, like some so, some students are disadvantaged and we know it, it impacts their study or you know the time and is there anything that sh we should know or uh, organizations should know in order to think okay how are we gonna how can we help in there because everyone really needs to to share with each other what's happening so yeah. we can work out we, we might not have a solution but we need to at least know what we need to work on and be aware so is there anything that from feedback from students that you think that could be useful to know because of organizations that we worked with yeah i mean their first official day is monday so the students that have been in the past couple of weeks are the ones that are finishing sort of their academic course 1920. Mm -hmm. um, and then the 2021 students begin officially on Monday. So with we, we're doing as much as we can to tackle the sort of digital poverty and the digital divide. 
Um, and if, like, like if you go onto the college website, we've got all the FAQs and everything up there. We're doing the hashtag in the loop campaign to keep students and staff um, as up to date with everything as possible. But at the minute, the I think some people are getting the hang of it now from what I've heard um, and the students that have kind of spoken to me, but we'll have a better picture in the weeks to come um, once the official sort of timetable starts on Monday. Um, we'll have a better and we're <laughs> from the meeting I was in yesterday we're sort of very prepared to react as quickly and as efficiently as possible with anything um, that may come up so we have plans in place but right now I, I can't sort of say much more than than that some people are loving it some people are this is weird but yeah everyone's in the learning stage <laughs> everyone's learning about how to do this really yeah pretty much you know there's we just have to kind of adapt very quickly to the situation as it occurs so at the minute i think we're we're okay we're definitely on track um and then as of monday we are ready to hopefully run smoothly but react should anything kind of not go according to plan <laughs> <laughs> we'll share a link to the campaign, so make sure it's the hashtag. What's the hashtag? So it's uh, it's on the um, Five College website, but it's you'll find on our socials. It'll be hashtag in the loop. In the and loop. It's, it, yeah, the Five College communications team have kind of put this together okay. just to make sure that you know everything that kind of changes and up to date all the FAQs, what returning to campus is going to look like. I'll send that link over as well, and we'll maybe paste them into sort of the comment section. So great. It's going to have a look. Um, it ties, well, it ties well with a week because it's count me in and then it's in the loop, so that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, this, I mean, it has everything. You know, I am exempt from wearing a mask. What, how do I do this? Or, you know, there's, um, I'm a, there's sort of things that have come in like, oh, I'm a sort of wheelchair user and I, when I come out of the lift, it almost looks like I'm going against the green. Is this okay? Like against the one-way system? So it's questions like that have been answered. And then, um, yeah, things to do with timetabling and their refectories, pretty much everything that we can anticipate is going to be asked is in there. Sounds so, great. Yeah, the college has done really well on that one, I think. Seem to have got their plan put in place, you know, effectively to the best that they can at this moment. Yeah, we just have to we just have to roll with it for now. We've got everything we've got, we're as prepared as we can possibly be. Excellent. Well, looking forward to the uh, online freshers week. <laughs> Thank you. I am very. Um, yeah, and I mean, all of that's on, we're sharing it constantly on the Five College Students Association Facebook page and our um, YouTube channel and stuff as well. So we're building lots of fun sort of content on there. So you can go and find out how to sign up if you're a new student coming to the college or a returning student coming to the college. Um, yeah, you should definitely get involved. I think it's really important that in such a, like I get that's really anxious for people coming in, but I think it's really important to still kind of join in with these things um, and enjoy that social aspect of coming to college. You know, we're all worried about X, Y, and Z happening, um, but you still get involved with everything that the Students Association do and the the clubs and, and things like that, because you do, I mean, it might be online, but you're still gonna meet some new people and, and get that social aspect of the college experience as well, which I think is really important in the kind yeah. of the, the communication is still there between everybody yeah and, that, and that's the main thing that we, you know we still have that type of contact and everything yeah Definitely. i've been, actually enjoyed you've made it fun online for what i've been watching yeah because i've been watching the little videos between you and sarah at the <laughs> moment <laughs> changing your acting and everything oh. <laughs> And I think the latest one I saw this morning was Sarah. I, I never got to watch the clip before I came on, but it was Sarah. She was worried about something. Yeah, this <laughs> week um, we're doing weekly Jade versus Sarah challenges just for fun. Excellent. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, those are definitely fun to film. And this one, I think, is probably the funniest one we've done. It's a longer video. It's, it's like 10, 11 minutes long, but it's, we're both just 
<laughs> very confused. It's very funny. We should have that in the post <laughs> in the in the timeline after this video. That sounds quite funny indeed. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's one way to keep, you know, yeah. let the students have a bit of a laugh, you know, to see yeah. what's going on and everything. Kind of thing. Yeah. Is there anything else that I'll spell right before we finish up for the day? No, I'm just really curious. I just want to find out. I get to check out the, the hashtag and the and the videos. Oh, yeah, you need to watch <laughs> the videos. Weird, that was good. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's really important to have something positive like that where, you know, uh, there is a lockdown, there's all these pressures on us, but you need, you need little things like that that are really positive. So it's really good to hear this. And yeah, we'll, we'll share it as much as possible. So, yeah, yeah great stuff. Good. Thank you. Thank you for. I don't even know what I've said in the last half an hour, but thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but that's why we do like that. Uh, it's not like a lecture or anything like that. We we just like finding out about projects because we all tend to be so busy and sometimes yeah. we just need to have that moment where we just so what's going on over there? Tell us a bit and yeah. yeah. So, so I hope it, it it did this today. So yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Okay. Thanks, Jade, for coming along to Let's Chat today. Uh, thanks, Leslie, for coming in. <laughs> um, tomorrow. Today we have Dean Saunders live at 1pm who will be playing the bagpipes on our Facebook page and tomorrow we have our final Let's Chat interview with Fife Interface Group at 11 o'clock and we have Music Act, I think it is it three, 4 o'clock, Elric? Uh, in the afternoon tomorrow, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, decanted. And everything it has so please come along you know and enjoy the fun because on sunday we're ending the week off with demi with doing a live music at 1 p.m so please enjoy the last few sessions with us That'd be great. right thank you bye all the best thank you